I have once again been checking out your football manager saves what you've been up to in this year's game and I've got some incredible and wildly different submissions to go through with you today. Five different saves, five different stories, five different adventures. Let's jump in to the first one. Save number one takes us then to here. We are in Argentina and this is the save courtesy of our good friend Kiz, a proud Welshman is Kiz and he says this about this save. To give us a bit of an introduction, I asked you guys to give us a little bit of a backstory, why your save is special, why you wanted to share it with, with us today. He says, Puerto Madryn is a city in Chubut province, uh, which is in Argentina, and gains its name from Yer Wladfa. I'm saying all of those things wrong, I am sure of it, which was the attempt of Welsh settlers to form colonies to provide their own new lands like England were doing to the entire world. Nice little jab at England there. Always good. Nice and early in the video too from kids there. Good. Now back being an Argentinian place, as he says there, there's still some cultural heritage links and there's known to be around 5,000 fluent Welsh speakers in the area. So you can kind of see what he's going for at this particular save setup here. I've also noticed that the key player is indeed a Welshman, Lewis Williams, which is always good. I also see that Kiz is also a legend at the club. He also goes on to say, add to which the fact that the club is named after Guillermo Brown, after the founder of the Argentinian Navy, William Brown, an Irish sailor who settled in Argentina and became a national hero. So the backstory is a rather fun melting pot. So we've got here, Kiz wanted to go and instill some Welsh roots to a club that has lots of links to Wales. I think it's a perfect little way to start a save. Something I didn't know about. This is all news to me. And I can see that he's already started to do exactly that in this save here with the existence of Lewis Williams here. I can see some maybe some other, there's like Williams in the names. There's an Edwards there as well. So I assume there's at least some more Welsh players in this team. There's two Williams. There's a Beckett. There's a Stevens, a Walters, a Poole. Feels like he's managed to impress the Welsh heritage onto this team. Guillermo Brown playing in the Argentine Premier Division, which they're now top. They're called, P yeah, Puerto Madryn is the PM in their name there. Top after 41 games. They're about to win another league title here. They've got a four-point lead, although it might split or do mad things. Not sure. It says this, though. So Kiz continues. My aim at the beginning, develop Welsh talent in Argentina, both staff and players. Ideal world, we get the next Messi to come through our club with dual citizenship and they choose Wales. Is is Williams that guy, Lewis Williams? I mean, he's pretty good, right? 28 years old now. He's started his career at Man City, brought to Guillermo Brown for 2.4 million, where he's been sensational. Really good average ratings. Look at this season here, 7.58. This season, he got 26 goals as well from attacking midfield. So he's kind of doing it, maybe not quite Messi levels, but... Kind of doing it, I can see. And again, I suppose not been developed at the club. He wants one to come through the youth intake, I think. Uh, now it's 2040. After starting in the second division, we're now at a stage where we've won nine Primera divisions, three Copa Argentinas, five Copa Liga Professionals, five Super Cups, five Super Copa Internationals, and seven Copa, seven Copa Libertadores. Fair play. Let's have a look at the, uh, maybe the, the records on here. In fact, let's go to landmarks on here and you can see the time that they're winning things on this. If we go to competitions, there's a Copa Libertadores there, another runners up there, Copa Argentina, Premier Division champions. Quite the, uh, the, the amount of success there. Is there a way I can see it on here? I feel like there's a good way to see. Or in fact, if I go to manager, if I go job history here, look, you can kind of see all of the, uh, the competition wins here. He's won a lot of trophies here in Argentina, has kids. Fair play to him. He goes on and continues a very long description today. Uh, we're limited to six foreign players in the squad at any time, so progress has been slow. Fair enough. But overpaying for Welsh youngsters and waiting two years for citizenship before buying another has been the plan. We also have some of the best youth facilities in the world. Let's have a look at those youth facilities. They are indeed very, very good. Four and a half star, five star youth recruitment, five star training facilities. Yeah, done quite well with that as well. And they're rich as well, which... Probably isn't that easy to do in Argentina. So fair play with what's been able to be achieved here. He says they use the youth facilities to keep their bank balance in the black due to the overspending on the Welsh boys. I've tried to develop a holistic Welsh approach with the vast majority of our staff being Welsh as well. Let's have a look at the staff here then. There are, as you as you would expect, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 
nine, ten. Loads more. We okay, can yeah, look. There's a lot of Welshmen in this uh, staff setup, all the way down into like the youth teams and the under twenty squad here. Look at this under twenty squad set of coaches. All of them Welsh. All of those guys there. Love it. Definitely doing what he's planned to do here. Then we're currently seeing a few of our guys leave for lower league Argentinian management positions now. So it's pretty much a full scale invasion at this point. We also have a 37k capacity new stadium, which will be this one on here, the Guilherme Brown PM Stadium, which was built in 2035. Very nice indeed. And so we're more than on course to be the biggest and best side in South American club football history. There's still plenty of the game left to play as I'm still waiting on my Lionel Messi and then in brackets, Williams. The team though, let's have a look at the squad. Maybe we'll go to the tactics screen here to see how he's rocking it. 4-2-3-1, I love it. A man of uh, straight towards my own heart there with just simplicity. It is like I thought. These guys here are all Welsh. Look, Nathan Beckett. Who's the best one according to the star ratings here? It is Lewis Williams. We looked at him. How good is Beckett here? Any of these coming through the youth intake? I, he's only 20, but yeah. Overspending to bring him to Argentina. 22 million to bring him in. Fair enough. I want to see the under 20s. Any Welshman in here? I've got second nationality on there. Let me go to general info here. There is a Welshman, Will Jones, and he did come through the youth intake. So maybe, maybe. I don't think he's that good, but it does happen at least. It's good to see that it actually does organically start to happen here then. There's another Welshman there, Luke Jones, that came through the youth intake. I love this save. I think it's really cool. It's very different, which is what I've tried to go for in today's video. I wanted to show you like the super successful ones, which this one is successful, but some of the more niche ideas for saves and really cool Cool, um ideas maybe this is the type of save that i should do as like a movie maybe in the future something like this where you try and really impress a nationality in a new country if there's a link or something we did have the brazil as a uh, uh a stream save once upon a time and that was good fun i really like this as a concept hopefully you guys enjoy it too that is our first save let's go through to number two before we do so i just want to say please subscribe to the channel i won't keep you long but also like the video because it really does help i hope you're enjoying the video i hope you love being here i'm trying my best to bring you lovely videos uh please do subscribe it really does help me out so leave a like on the video and maybe in the comments you can tell me what is your favorite save from today's video will it be kisses one that we just saw or will it be one we're going to look at in a second thank you very much for letting me just you know plug things to you at this stage here Oh, also, I should just say, we may well do another video like this. I'm going to put the link to submit your saves at, in the comment of today's video. So if you wanted to submit your save because you think it's better than these ones, you can do so as well. And maybe we'll do a follow-up video if this one does well. Anyway, continue. Next up, and to really contrast that save from before from Kiz, we have this save from Riadinho. Thank you, my friend, for submitting your save. Here with Liverpool, that is full meta and it's just full. He submitted it because he says he went unbeaten. He says he did it without saves coming. And somehow it was just because the FM gods have been nice to me. He's got a 4-2-3-1 tactic with all of the best players in the world, you know, that you might sign that are really good on FM. He signed Vinicius Jr. and Musiala, Kamavinga, Bargi, Tadebo, Militao, Theo Hernandez. Spent, I assume, quite a lot of money. We're in 2027 here. And I assume I spent quite a lot of money on these players over the years. £245 million spent there. 106 on Camavinga. Uh, 73 on Liveramento. £355 million spent there. £206 million spent there. He's built himself a very good FM team. And he wanted to share his save because last season, I think it was. I assume it was last season. Let's have a look at it here. He managed to go unbeaten. 34 wins, 4 draws, 0 losses, 106 points. He won himself the league and he wanted to share. Fair enough. I'm happy to show a, a range of different saves. An unbeaten season is just outrageously good if you can achieve it. 144 goals. That's, that's a lot. Only 28 conceded as well. How did he do? Let's just, to compare, he lost. Okay. He hasn't lost. He's never lost. He's never lost. Without saves coming. Somehow the FM gods have been nice to him, he says. Yet to lose a league. Game. I'll let you that game he won that season he won 38 games out of 38 I'll let you guys decide in the comments down below you can leave me one word or you know in fact you can leave me one phrase it can either say save scum or I believe him okay you can let me know in the comments down below I will let you guys be the arbiters of justice in this particular case but having uh, never lost a game 
I think there are enough enough reason to be skeptical. Look at the wins as well. I guess like it is a pretty OP four two three one. The players are ridiculous. Let's have a look at Rooney Bargi at this stage here. He's become quite good. Oh, I can't really. I, I'm sure you're going to ask me to show you his uh his uh attribute analysis. People like to see this. They're really good players. Darwin Nunez, Darwizzi. He's great, but never losing a game. I'll let you guys decide. That, though, is save number two. I will show you all types of different saves. I'm not going to censor what I bring you guys in videos like this. You guys submit your saves. I'll share them because I think it's interesting to see the different ways that people are playing the game. And no judgment. If you want to play like this, play like this. If you can achieve this without saves coming, then absolutely fair play to you because that is, that is ridiculous. Let's move through to save number three. Okay, so from one save where they've never lost to this save here where... Thank you, Magical Waffle, for this one. We've uh, we've lost we've lost four of the last six. We're um, we've not won a game in about seven games. So quite the contrast. We're doing lots of contrast in today's video, aren't we? This save then, Magical Waffle save started as he described as a unemployed manager with no badges or any experience. A little bit of a journeyman type save. It took months to find a job before eventually ending up. If we go to his profile here, before eventually ending up at Dnepri Mogilev in the Belarusian First League. Um, of course, that's where you would uh, no, normally, yeah, we all end up in the Belarusian Second Tier. This is actually in the second, the, yeah, it's, uh, their First League isn't their top league, it's their Second League, because they've also, their highest league is called the Belarusian Highest League, um, which is quite on the nose as a name, isn't it? But the First League is the first one down. So Dnepri Mogilev, he did get them promoted, promoted before moving to Dinamo Minsk. Dinamo Minsk off of uh, David from Minsk there, where he was then successful, winning them the double two competition wins here. The Belarusian Highest League and the Belarusian Cup were the two wins that year. I then moved to Germany and got Osnabrück in the Bundesliga 2 before getting promoted with them by finishing third, going up to the Bundesliga. A nice rise to a decent position then. So starting in Bel Belarus, making their way to the Bundesliga 2, making his way to the Bundesliga. Osnabrück are a pretty cool team as well, actually. I like their uh, their purple branding and their home kit's quite nice. Look, I quite like them. They're fun. But since then, Magical has moved on to Stuttgart, who are struggling. He says he's moved there. Uh, it actually says with Osnabrück, by the way, he got them promoted to the Bundesliga for the first time in their history and then finished eighth. I might be a legend there. I need to check. We'll check for you. Are you a legend there? Uh, no. I'm sorry to say... You, you're not actually even a favoured personnel, which is, that's harsh. That That is, I assume that you're called Magical Waffle in the save, right? You are. Um, So that is harsh, but no, you're, you're, you're not a legend there. Sorry, sorry, buddy. He says he moved to Stuttgart, who are struggling mid-season. So he came here in, I think it was December when he first did move here. If we go to the timeline, it will say when he actually came in. 19th of December... He has gone to the uh, the the struggling Stuttgart. He brought in Dario Serna as his assistant manager. And he's had so far just the January window to try and make Stuttgart a team that are going to stay up. He's guided them to 12th in the league. And I wanted to show you this save because I think it's just, it's by no means a finish save. And it's by no means like an amazing wow save necessarily. But it's quite a real save. And like this is the type of adventure that could become an all-timer if you want to continue it. Like from here, it's got a bit of struggle, which I like. I like a save that has a bit of struggle rather than just, you know, win, 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 win. You want to go through times where you need to keep a team up or you haven't got much money to spend. I wonder what the budget is here, actually. Is there any type of budget? 14 million and then no wage budget left. And he says he is desperately waiting for the summer transfer window because form is not looking great. What are you using as a tactic here? Another 4231, Tiki Taka 4231. Overlapping high press, it says. He's got Jaden Sancho on loan from, uh, well, is it from Manchester United, I assume? On loan from Newcastle uh, at this stage. We're in 2028 here. Jaden Sancho in there. De La Vega, I've signed him a few times. Hannibal Medry in the midfield. A big, big legend here. Do you know what? This save has my full respect now. Dan Axel Zagadou, the big man at the back. Fair enough. Is he actually there in real life? I think he might be there in real life, isn't he? He is. So you've kept him along. How many goals from corners? Not that many, just one this year, two the year before. But maybe that's the thing. Load up some tactic techniques and get him on the end of them. I'm sure he will score goals. He also says then, so he's got Jaden Sancho on loan from Newcastle playing right wing. And if you go to the social feeds, 
something has just happened in the save that he's really interested in, which is that Liverpool have just had a consortium takeover. I don't know if I'm going to be able to find this here, but they've just had a consortium takeover, making them one of the richest teams in the world. So there's your new goal, right? Try and get yourself to Liverpool under the new regime headed off by uh, Thomas Johnson. Maybe that becomes the new aim. Can you go and get yourself a Premier League title and spend loads of money there? I'm sure if you do a good enough job here at Stuttgart, that could be something you could aim for. I like this save because it's very real. I like this save because it's relatable. I'm sure you've all got saves that are kind of similar to this one. There's a lot of struggle in there. You've got some fun little signings in here. You've got Dan, Ax Dan Axel Zagadu. I like it a lot. Thank you for sharing Magical Waffle. Let's move on to our fourth save of today's video. Okay, save number four. And I did say variety is the spice of life. Thank you very much to Wallace for submitting this save. And you'll notice I start on this save because the, the reason I've chosen this one is because he's managed to get himself into £147 million worth of debt with Millwall. Although their financial status is apparently okay. I don't think it is. He says this about his save. He says 145 million in the red. But I do seem to pass FFP every year. I buy all of my players using 12 month repayments. He bought Sesco for 100 million on the Never Never payment scheme. I'd like to see you using it. That is a classic. I do love the Never Never. However, this may be a case where... What's the projection saying? Um, ooh, it's not, not looking good, Brev. <laughs> is what I'll say about that £540 million worth of debt coming up, according to this. Uh, he did say he did win the treble, though, and Sesco got Ballon d'Or, so no idea how he's not in... Uh, he says he's no idea how he's not in administration as well. I just want to see on these this debt and these loan, the transfer debt is £176 million, £403 million in terms of net debt. I don't envis envisage... I'm getting a... I'm getting a, a, a reading of your future here. I don't think this looks good. I, I mean, I, I'm actually a bit shocked that you are passing FFP a little bit. At least you've had the success. If we go to your profile and have a look at those, the job history, you're winning things. You're doing great. You got promoted to the Premier League. You won the championship. You then came fifth first season in the Prem. You then won the FA Cup. Then you won the FA Cup again. Fourth season, fifth season, sorry. The quadruple, Carabao Cup, Premier League, FA Cup and Champions League. Outrageously good. You've now so far this season won the Community Shield and the UEFA Super Cup. Probably in line to go and win it all again. Are you top of the league? I assume you are. You're in January with a five-point lead at the top. Although Spurs could technically go back to the top, couldn't they? Here's Sesco with his 21 goals. Show you his position and maybe his... Uh, his graphic, his attribute analysis graph there. He's very good. He cost 120 million in total. Obviously very good. You said that he won the golden ball or the Ballon d'Or, I should say. Um, yeah, I mean, expectable. He's very, very good. However, what I want to see is on your clauses, in terms of clauses going out, you have got then on the never, never, you've got uh, 60, another 800k there. Another 5% of the profit. I want to just see. Okay, so by Chetich, there's another £10 million being owed. This guy, there's another £15 million. Another 20... Okay, another £35 million for this ginger German guy. There's another £6 million for Buonanotte. There's another few million there. Usman Diamande, that's all right. It's just a sell-on. There's another £16 million, Another £21 million on Eric Garcia. There's a £15 million... On Estevé, um, this looks like one of my saves. Another twenty million pounds there. Another thirty. There's another fifty million on Shea Lacey. Uh, Ten percent of the profit. Another twenty-five million on Nuno Mendes. Uh, Millie. There's a little bit on him too. Luca. Rome Hang on. There's more there. Thirty million pounds on Mikey Moore. Um, Luca Romero. Six plus another like eight million there. Twelve on Seaman. Twenty-five million still to pay. On Sesco. Terranova's got another. That's just nothing really. Tyrrell, there's what, 24, 35, or so 33 million on him. Vanderson, that's fine. Lewis Washington, another 6 million there. I'm sorry to expose all this, but that's a lot of extra money. You could be in trouble. Maybe start having a look at the jobs that are available. Because if you jump ship, it's not your problem anymore, is it? But I love to see this. I love to see that people are playing the game in such different ways. You're achieving all the success, but financially this is this is ruinous isn't it another 20 million on zaire emery as well let me just check for you any good jobs available 
Wickham, Hitchin, um, not necessarily jobs that I'd be looking at at this stage. Maybe just keep an eye out is what I'd suggest on this one. But thank you so much for sharing. I just want to see the team, actually. There is the, the 11 together look. This Premier League winning 11 with Sesco scoring 26 and 26 for him. Very, very good. Thank you for sharing. I love it. Loads of debt. Very, very fun. I will uh, I wish you the very best of luck in the future. You might need it. Let's move through to our final save of today's video. And our final save of today's video then is this one, courtesy of Axel. Thank you very much for sharing your save with me, my friend. It looks like a real adventure, one to finish on, a success story to finish on after some wildly different saves that we've looked at today, right? He describes this save here then as a save that he's never had before. He's never had a save like this before. It's the perfect save for him. He's called it a zero to hero save, which is where he started in India at Kashmir FC and then made his way to the very top to most recently being the France manager and his piece de resistance. His creme de la creme is winning the World Cup. He's French himself, so winning the World Cup with France feels like the top of his mountain. And I tell you what, it's a pretty cool way to maybe finish your save. Maybe you're going to continue. I am not quite sure. But a World Cup win after starting as a manager in the Indian National Football League, I think is a really cool journey and something we need to have a look at today. So he starts in India at Kashmir. He wins the league with them in the second season, winning the league, the Cup and the, uh, well, two different leagues in there, the Durand Cup and the Federation Cup, before moving to Australia. Melbourne City is uh, the team there, and I assume this is where the dates have overlapped, rather than he didn't go to Brazil and then come back. He's at Melbourne City, where, what did you win at Melbourne? You won the uh, A final series, so a couple of things in there. So I think he may have won in the league. Let's see what he says about it. Does he describe it? Uh, you go to Melbourne City from the City Group. Same thing. Won the championship in two years and then left for Flamengo. So off to Brazil, where I think first season, it seems, you've won the Brazil National First Division, which is pretty cool. Before, second season, five trophies. Copa Libertadores. That's the main one. That's like your Champions League, isn't it? In Brazil. Copa Libertadores. And that is apparently enough. I tell you what, that's quite interesting. If you win the Copa Libertadores in Brazil, or, you know, South America, that is apparently enough to get you the Manchester United job, which is a big old leap. So he's gone from Brazil to Manchester United and then immediately won four tro five trophies. He's won the FA Cup, the Premier League, the Champions League, as well as the European South American Club Challenge as well as the UEFA Super Cup. I'm not even sure what that is, the European South American Club Challenge. It's like a, is that like a different version of the World Club Cup, potentially? I'm not quite sure. Then, though, also became the Netherlands manager, where you won the uh, the European the International League, which is, the, that's the Nations League, isn't it? And then finally, the, uh, the Euros. Okay, you won the Euros with the Netherlands too. Also won the Nations League with France before culminating in that World Cup win at the very end. I just love the, the development of all of this. It's difficult, I suppose, to see like what your team looked like at Manchester United. I suppose we can look at the France team now. We go to this France squad. Who are we working with to go and win this World Cup? It's some new gens in there. I suppose it is 2034 at this stage. Have we still got Mbappe on the scene yet? Yeah, Mbappe's left wing, Ben Seguir, Zahari the striker. Yeah, he looks he looks quite good. Left footed. Uh Yoel Zahari. Mbappe. They don't have faces when you're the the France manager, I'm not quite sure why, but you you know, they do if you go to most of the time, if you go to PSG, then have a look at them. For some reason, I won't now because I've been on there, but sometimes their faces can come back. Where's Kylian Mbappe on here? Yeah, he doesn't have a face because I'm, I'm the France manager. Anyway, we are being uh, distracted there. A big France win. I want to see that cup, the World Cup final. It was Belgium beaten in the World Cup final then with the winning goal from Kefren Taram. Early on in the fourth minute, a France World Cup win from a French manager. I love it. It's very good. Also beating England 3-1 in the quarters. Oh, your former team, the Netherlands, in the semi-final on penalties. That's fun. And then Norway before that in the round of 16. Let's have a look at what else he describes. He says, so going back a little bit, then I've got to Manchester United at the start of a wonderful season. The team was already really good. Won the league and the Champions League. Chose to be in the national team. Started with the Netherlands. You won the Euros and the Nations League, moved to France, your home country, won, and then finished with the masterpiece uh, by winning the World Cup against Belgium in the final. He says he's proud of what he's done, and I think it'll be the last time he will ever be as successful as he was in this save. I love to celebrate things like that. I love to 
Love to see people having a really good time with their football manager saves. I think it's a good place to end today's video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to submit your saves, I'll put the link to the, uh, the Google form if you can go and submit yours from there. Maybe we'll do a follow-up. Also, let me know if you want to see a follow-up in the comments down below. Subscribe to the channel. Leave a like on the video. But most importantly, have a lovely rest of your day. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.